guys, it's Lisa back with another video for you for Lisa Wise Designs. And today we're gonna to continue in our Magical Wallet series and we're going to be continuing the matting process. Today we should finish up the matting on the wallet and then tomorrow we should start working on this really cute box that it goes inside. So, if you're enjoying this project, and I'm really enjoying making it with you, I hope you can tell. So, if you wanna pick up the kit with all the supplies that you see here that you need to make this finished project, just look in the details or the description box below and you'll have, find a link to my Etsy shop. So you can go on over there and pick up the supplies, or if you just want the tutorial only and use your own supplies, be, feel free to do that, and it's actually a pretty good bargain. And you're going to get the full color instructions. Let's see, this one has about 35 pages to it there. All right, so let's start back with this. I'm gonna put the box away till tomorrow. So this is where we left off. We've made our wallet. We have put the magnets on. I just love that sound. So we have uh, all of this is matted. We put pictures in as we're going along. So now we need to do this center section. So grab your cutting guide. We're starting in the middle of page 17 right here. We're gonna put a horizontal photo down and then we're gonna cut some strips of paper and then grab one piece of ephemera. So let me grab my trimmer here. All right, so first step is we need this striped paper. So this is the back of some cut aparts, three by four cut aparts that I'm using here. And we need a four inch by five eighths of an inch. And this is already should be four. Yeah, cut down, because it's a cut apart. So we need 5 eighths of an inch. So if you're looking for 5 eighths of an inch, it is a little bit larger than half of an inch and a little bit smaller than 3 quarters. So right in the center there. So I'm gonna go over to a half and then go up another two small marks and that should be at 5 eighths of an inch. All right, so here's that piece. I could put this back in my little scraps. So then we're going to grab this really pretty paper that has all these words on it. And then on the back, it's got the polka dots. So all we're gonna do is at the top of this paper, we're gonna cut a strip. And the rest of this paper, we're gonna use um, in later on in this video to make um, that cool file folder. So I'm gonna go over to half of an inch and cut off the branding strip. Throw that away. Now at the top of this, we're gonna cut a one and a half inch strip off the top. So one and a half, just like so. And I'm gonna put this close by because we're gonna use that in a few minutes. So then from here, let's see, it needs to be six and three quarters. This up every six and three quarters. This part of my scraps. There we go. So this is going to be for the first flap. This is B2. So let's go ahead and go down and cut another piece, this last section here on 17, and cut the matte piece for B1. We're going to use a vertical photo, and then we just need one piece here over to the side. So let's just go ahead and do that piece too while we're trimming. So this is gonna be this fireworks paper, which I love and it's perfect for a magical vacation. Cut off that branding strip. All right. Then for this, we want it to be two and five eighths wide. So I'm gonna go over. Two and five eighths again is a little bit bigger than two and a half and a little smaller than two and three quarters. So two and a half, then go over a little. Okay. I just don't like uh, lots of big gaps when I'm matting is why I'm doing these weird measurements. So you wouldn't have to do that. You would absolutely could do something smaller if you wanted to. You could do like the two and a half if that made you a little crazy. <laughs> All right, two and five eighths. And five and a half. Even though I wrote the instructions, I'm still checking my measurements. I guess that's just who I am. All right, so now that we have this, 
Let's do some inking and gluing down here. It doesn't look like much right now, does it? But it's going to help frame those photos that you take, put some ephemera on top, and make some memories. So you'll have to tell me in the comments section, when you make these mini albums, do you make an effort to journal along with them and tell you know a snippet of the story of your memories? Or do you just let the pictures do the talking that you might just put a date on there and go for it? And I have been known to do both, especially on like Christmas pictures or those type of things, just putting dates on it, which is important to know the dates because even though you think you'll never forget, you will eventually. And I've also like done a lot of in detail um, journaling. I've done it both ways. So this one, I do plan on at least putting a little bit of information in there because I want to remember this unusual year for me of going to uh, Disney, which is mm, 10 hour drive or so from here. That's how we talk in the South about how long distances are. So from central Alabama to central Florida, but actually we flew on all these trips. Okay, so open up your really pretty <laughs> um, Walla album. So like I said, the first one is gonna be your B2, which I have to remember which, that, which this one is. So B2 is actually this first flap here, what we named it. And these are the two pieces we're gonna need. So what I did is align this up at the bottom and then on the side, and then I grab a four by six photo that should go right here and it should fit beautifully if your photos are four by six. Just to make my life easier, I'm gonna open the flat where it's flat, just flip it all over, and that just makes it easier for me and I can see that score line really well and then I'll glue down. So make sure as you're putting these down that you don't forget to corner round. Match up those corners. I like to do it after I lay it on top because this has got so many flip flaps, it would be easy to, uh, to corner around the wrong ones. So this one doesn't need corner rounding there. And then the photo is gonna go here. So I'm gonna corner around the top right of this one. This is not my favorite ride at Disney, but I know the kids love this ride. It, this one um, is called Rock and Roller Coaster. It, um, it is beside my favorite ride of all time, <laughs> which is Tower of Terror. And I think I got a picture of that one of me and Grace here. But this is me and Grace on Rock and Roller Coaster. And although I do love the theming, and I love the music because it's from the 80s, I don't like how it makes me feel. It kind of hits my head back and forth a little bit because it goes upside down. So when I got off of it this year, I think I told, it was either my daughter or Grace. I'm like, nah, yeah, not sure how many more years I've got that one in me. <laughs> the rest of them I'm good on. That one did a number on me. Of course they laughed. But I, I remember when my dad used to ride all the rides with us growing up and one year he just stopped. And we were like, wow, what happened? And I can't remember how old he was, but if I were a betting woman, I think he'd probably be around 50 years old, which I got a couple years, but I'm knocking on its door. I'm knocking on its door. So cute. And I love how we can just piece it together like that. It brings interest to the photo like this, and it helps frame it out. So Latte, of course, is barking. You know, I have a, a machine at the house, so while I'm doing that, I'm looking for my little ephemera pieces. It's called a Furbo, and when she barks, when I'm not here, it sends me a message so I can check on her. And that thing never goes off, hardly ever, unless I'm actually here in the house. So I, that tells me something. That tells me that she's probably sleeping a lot when I'm not here. So when I am here, she must be very She's up and active, <laughs> so I'm like, okay then. I'm gonna go ahead and use this black soot. And these are the two pieces I'm going to be using, one on this flat, one on the next. So this one says, today was magical. And this one says, dreams come true. So I may have to put her in the laundry room, which I call her bedroom, because I put up a baby gate so she can still see out. 
And that seems to calm her down. She likes that. She doesn't get upset if she can see out. But she will tend to then take a little nap. Okay, that's gonna work perfect right here. Doesn't cover up too much of the little logo and it looks really cute. All right, so I'm gonna put that in the corner. So since I already have my photo down, I'm gonna put glue all the way around the edges and just glue it into place. And I'll show you my first sample where I don't have photos. On that one, what I would do is I would only put glue on the bottom, kind of like a flap, so that if you're giving this as a gift or if you're gonna go back and put photos in later, you can slide your picture in, just like, see right here? So then if you have a photo, then you can just slide it in, go ahead and glue it, and then you can just pull that up, put some glue, and put it down. But if you're making this for yourself, you may not want to put the ephemera pieces on quite yet. You can go back and do that. But if you're making it as a gift, that would be nice so they know exactly then what to do. Okay, so now we're at the bottom of page 17. We're going to open this. So now this flap is what we call B1. And on this one, what I did is I put the fireworks on the right side. And then I put uh, a four by five and a half vertical photo. So let me look here. I was thinking about using this one. I don't think that was it. Let's see, oh yeah, I'm gonna use that one. I love this picture, so much fun. So you're gonna have to trim this photo down by half of an inch if they're four by six. So I'm gonna take it off the top on this one. Well, maybe not. Take a little off the top, because I don't wanna cut off the Grumman's Chinese Theater if I don't have to. Ooh, I sure don't wanna take my feet off. I'm bad about this. I'm bad about cutting on the bottom and cutting on the top. I've got, to, I really wish I could find a trimmer that has all the numbers then at the bottom. So this is gonna be five and a half. Because I like to cut on the bottom for some reason. But, see it gets cut off down here before you get to five inches, where at the top it's not. Anyway, that's one of my many idiosyncrasies in life. So just kind of line this up. Okay, make sure it's gonna fit just right. I already inked it. I'm gonna do the same thing just because I think it helps me. I'm just gonna flip it over while it's flat and do the gluing. So on this one, we don't have to round in the corners since I put it on the side, but on the photo, then we do. So let me do this. And you'll have to let me know if you like seeing this examples with and without photos. I don't always do them with photos, but if I have photos that I know I was gonna put in here anyway, I just decided to just go ahead and do that with you guys. So that's gonna look like this. And see, this one has got the fireworks background, so I thought that was just perfect and could put it just like so. I love how everything coordinates. Hey, Latte. She's come to the door now to peek in at me to see what I'm doing. It's kind of funny, during the holidays is usually the only time that I'm home a lot of days in a row and like all day. So I usually get a full week off, you know, in the winter months around the holidays and she will act like she's so exhausted because I'm here all the time and she feels like she needs to be alert, I guess. And so she doesn't get all her naps in and it just cracks me up. So I know it's just September, but it's coming quickly, and honestly, I cannot wait. Cannot wait to have some, some holiday time off. <laughs> All right, and like I said, here too, since I already have my photo down, I put glue over the whole thing, but if I weren't, I would just put glue on this side and glue it down to the paper and then let it flap over the photo. And what I decided to do is the way this ephemera piece is shaped, it's got points on the uh, center, and I just lined up those points there with the open space between the photo and the pattern paper there. So here's the original one here. So just like I said, see I would just leave this where there's no glue on that side. You could slide that photo in. And another thing I do when I'm putting down my photo mats, see how they're not all the way glued down? Because I don't want to, I want to be able to take these up. So I just put tiny dots of glue in four corners where I can just pull them off without doing damage or hopefully not doing any damage there. Okay, flip this on over. Like I said, at the end of this project, whatever ephemera pieces that we have left, I'm gonna come back and probably put more 
uh, things on here to help decorate it. But this is just like the petticoat, what Miss Brenda always says from May May Made It. This is like um, the first layer. So now we're going to be working on the top of page 18. So the, we're gonna have four vertical photos, and the only thing we're gonna do is we're going to frame them out on the sides with small strips of paper. So let's go ahead and cut those out. What I'm going to be using is this red dot paper, which had those castles on the back. So I'm gonna grab a piece of that that's left over. And then yeah, on the back of this firework paper, they have blue stars. So I'm gonna be using some of that. And what we need is half inch by five and a half. Let me see what I've got here. This is way big enough. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it five and a half. Oh, come on. Now I just need two strips of this, so I don't think I'll do that in case I need the bigger piece later. So I'm just gonna cut some half inch strips. So we need two out of the red. And on this one, yeah, since it's, I need to cut it down, it's 12 inches, and we just need one here. So then I could get two out of that one because it's so big. And then we need to cut them down to five and a half. So Shannon at May May Made It was the first person to point out to me how I <laughs> I use my trimmer at the top and the bottom and how, you, you know, in her experience, her and May May, they, uh, you know, just cut at the top the whole time. So I really never thought about that I did that until she pointed it out in one class. And since she said that, I really started noticing it. And I thought, you know, I need to be on the lookout for a trimmer that has it all on the bottom or need to change the way I trim. It's not very efficient, even though that's what works for me. I have had uh, trimmers where the whole bed, like it was 12 inches long, so you didn't have to have that little arm and everything, but boy, it was heavy and took up so much room on my desk that I decided that was not for me either. So I kept it, but that's what I used to cut down like chipboard pieces, thicker pieces. So it did serve a purpose, just not one I wanted to keep on my desk constantly to move around, because boy, it was a workout. It was heavy duty. Well, space is precious, is it not? Especially if you're not, don't have a whole room dedicated to crafting. All right, so. Well, let's go. So as you open these two flaps, we're gonna come back and do the backs, but what I'm gonna do now is these two vertical ones. And don't ask me why I jump around. But that's just what I do sometimes. So I really wanted to use this one, this one, and this one. Are these the ones I picked out? Four vertical ones. This is just a stock photo that they give to you, but it's so cute and I love it. But I may not use that one. I really like this photo. Okay. Oh, I forget. I gotta trim down all my vertical photos. So not, the book is not quite big enough to hold them in the vertical position. So my photos have got to be five and a half. There I go again. Oh, my one cutting up, feeding its head a little bit. This is a good ride. I love this picture of my friend Megan and I. She is holding on and she is so intense and she's loving it. Look at me. Ah, looking right at the camera and hold my hands. <laughs> I'm such a ham.
I just can't get out of the habit. Alright, so now there should be five and a half. This is my friend Megan and I, Animal Kingdom. The only thing I can say that was not fun this year was wearing those masks the whole time. That that did make it very cumbersome. Very warm. I don't know how the medical profession wears them all day long. Oh, it's so sweaty. Okay, here we go again. So what I decided to do is I did my red and white dots here, and then when I opened them, I did the blue and white stars. Kind of sounds like I'm talking about Lucky Charms, does it not? <laughs> so I did it just like this on the outside and did my photos coming toward the inside. So I think I'll do that again. I like it when you can put flaps on a project that can do double duty so that you can use them for vertical or horizontal photos. So these ones in the center, these smaller flaps is really only good for vertical photos. But these flaps, see, can be for either. Just depends on how you map them. Just gotta see which one goes where. Since I'm gonna put this one on the right side, then that means that the left side needs corner rounding. This, and then I think I'll put this one here. And this side needs corner rounding. And I'm gonna get a white piece of paper here to just put underneath this flap so I can see it a little better. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna butt this photo right up against uh, that strip. So you'll also have to tell me what photos are you gonna put in this magical themed album? Is it going to be, you know, your Disney World trip to Orlando or maybe the one in California? Is it gonna be everyday photos for maybe a Disney loving themed person, which so I think this will be really cute for a little girl, a little boy who loves Disney stuff and has lots of uh, Disney themed toys at home. I think it'd be perfect for that. And then you can also, like I said, since it has a little storage box, put extra things in there. And I have maps in mine and a few other things that I picked up along the way that we'll take a look at later. So that is really cute. Loving it with photos. All right, so now I'm gonna open up these two flaps and now we're gonna do the back of these. So what I'm going to do here, and we are in the middle of page 18, is again, put them toward the outside and put the strips toward uh, the inside on this one. So it's the straight side for the strips. So and that makes it frame out, plus it makes it a little bit easier on you not to have to try to put these tiny strips in your <laughs> paper uh, corner rounder, because that's not fun. Okay, here we go. So I am, I think short. I think I cut my strip short. I sure did, look at that, one of my strips is short. That's okay. At least I recognized it. See, it happens to all of us. Just gonna cut another half inch off. And they're five and a half inches. I must have cut it at five. Yeah, that's what I must have done. Oh well, at least I have more paper. As I dropped it in the floor. There we go. I'm so proud of myself for having taken this vacation and getting it scrapbooked in the same year. Because <laughs> even as much as I love to craft and 
scrapbook things, I always seem to be very behind. I always told myself, when my child grows up, I'm going to have all the time in the world once she goes to college to scrapbook, and I'll get all caught up. I said, take the pictures now, make the memories now, you know, while she's little, and then scrapbook them later if you don't get around to it. So I know there's a lot of truth in that, and I have gone back and do, done a lot of her photos, but I still have much more to do, and of course, I'm still making new memories to scrapbook. So I think this is a lot of fun, so cute. Let's see on the other side. Uh, my mother told me not too long ago that her, uh, well, I guess it is my family too, person in our family, um, scrapbooks, and has gone to retreats uh, once a month for many, many years, and then she does retreats uh, during the summer, and she literally has run out of photos to scrapbook of all her kids, grandkids, everything going on in their life. She literally has no pictures left to scrapbook. I am just amazed, amazed at that. And so uh, she actually goes to events and goes and looks at old houses and does certain things just to take pictures so that she'll have something to scrapbook. It just blows my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I would love to be in that situation or not. Sometimes I think I would. But that would be frustrating not to have photos. So I know there's pl plenty of you out there going, I'll send her some of mine. So this is so cute. So cute. Okay. So moving on, now we're going to do these little horizontal flaps. So this top one I decided needed a four by six cut apart. So you can put a photo here or you can put a cut, cut apart here. But let me find the cut aparts. It's gonna be a horizontal. Here they are, here's the cut aparts. So you can decide which one you want. I think we wind up using all of these cut aparts because I don't remember using this paper at all, which is so cute though. But I wind up using all these. So I was glad I had them. So I'm going to use this one that's in like in craft paper. Put this to the side. It says Magical Memories. And the rest of these flaps, I'm going to put photos, horizontal photos. And since I take pictures with my iPhone, which I know a lot of people do, take pictures with their phone nowadays, you have to really think about taking horizontal photos. When you had the regular camera, you know, a 35 millimeter camera all of our lives, you know, we hold our camera like this, so most of our photos were horizontal. Well, now most of us hold our phone like this, so most of our photos are vertical. I know a lot of you have noticed that. So in a lot of my albums, I plan my albums to have more vertical spots for photos because that's how we usually take them with phones now. So I had to tell myself on vacation, sometimes remind myself to take horizontal. Tell me I'm not the only one that has noticed that too. Now I noticed the people the PhotoPass people that would take photos of us, of course, are using professional cameras and they're still taking a lot of horizontal pictures, which works good for me. So I'm just using this white paper again, like I say, whenever I need to, to help outline my little flaps to make sure that I can see exactly where I can, um, where the cut marks are or the score line is. So I can glue it on there into place. And what happens to be close at hand is <laughs> the back side of the template that came in your kit, if you picked up the kit for either the magical or the scenic route version of this project. So we'll get to that today. All right, so, so cute. So when you open it up, isn't that a cute spread where this and this is kind of mirrored together and then this here. All right, so let's start putting our photos down. So I've already picked out quite a few horizontal photos. I just have to glue them down and make sure that I corner around them in the right spots. So if you ever need to know anything about Disney World and have weird questions, I'm the one to ask because I do so much research before we go. I should have been a travel agent. And maybe I'll do that in my next life. But this photo here, if you did not know, if 
if you have a Disney Chase Visa credit card, there are a couple, of, um, at, at least two, I think right now there's only two that's open places at the Disney World Parks in Orlando that only those people get to go inside and have a photo pass photographer take pictures of you. And then of course it's included if you buy all the photos from Disney all at once as downloads or if you just want to buy one or two. But anyway, you have a professional photographer that takes you through this building in Epcot with all these backgrounds. And you have to have like that, like I said, the Disney Chase Visa card in order to get in there. And it was just so much fun. We had some really great pictures taken there. And I know there's another spot in, um, in Hollywood Studios it has something to do with the Star Wars land. We went and did that one too, but I wasn't as excited just because I'm not a, a big Star Wars fan. Uh, it used to have characters in it, but with, you know, the virus and everything, it doesn't have characters. It just had backdrops, but it was still really cool. So if you, if you have that credit card or are interested in getting the card, just keep that in the back of your mind one day if you're a big Disney fan. It's really totally worth it. So my daughter has these really cute backpacks and Stitch is my favorite character. So she let me borrow the Stitch backpack while we were there and then hers has poo on it. And we got so many compliments while we were there from people. And I know that made her feel so good. So many people loved them. Wanted to know where she got them. So cute. So I have quite a few ride photos. This is another great photo. Um, look, we're the only ones in the ride car. So that was really special. That's dinosaur. It's kind of, it's a little scary, but I absolutely love it. And my friend Megan and I rode it twice one morning when we ran there first with no people in the vehicles. That was so nice. So it made for, I had to get this photo. It made for a great photo. It's not often that you get your own ride vehicle. So makes for a much better photo than all these random people in there, in my opinion anyway. Just like this one, we had our own vehicle. You can see people there behind us. Okay. Sorry if I'm rambling. Going back through. There's her again. So much fun. This is Slinky Dog, Slinky Dog Dash. You can see his little tail behind us. I think we were actually in the last car in the very back. It was a wild ride. It's really cute. As you can tell, I love to ride. I love roller coasters. Not scared of too much at a theme park, except things that go round and round really, really fast. I can do a carousel, but if it's one of those that's really wild, that goes strictly round and round really quickly and a bunch of times, now that'll get me sick. But a regular roller coaster, I love it. So cute. Right. What else we got here? We got one more. Flaps. See how many photos you can get on here? I love this. You can get quite a few photos in here. So then I'm going to put this one, which I love, this photo. This is a magic shot photo. So if it was a video, you could see it starts out on the castle and it zooms in and zooms out. So I made this um, on my Cricut where it just cut a circle out because that's this picture here. That's us right there in the Magic Kingdom. So like it says in the video, it zooms in and out and it shows where you are and then it, you know. <laughs> I don't know that I explained that really well. Yeah, it shows a close-up of you and then it zooms way out. It's really, really cute. I just love it. So I had to incorporate it somehow in my book. Wouldn't it be neat if we could put a video in there? So they have these uh, magic shots or these zoom photos in a lot of the different lands too. And I did a, a few of them, but this one was my favorite in front of the castle. We already have plans to go back, not this year, but next year and take my grandbaby, who's a little bit over 18 months old right now. Right before she turns three, we want to take her. So look how cute. I don't know if you can see that that's us down there, but anyway. So much fun. So now we've got most of our flaps done. Let's see. I think I did yeah, in the directions this first, and then I went back to the flaps. Who knows why? Who knows? 
that's just who it is. Or that's just the way it goes. All right, let's see. The bottom of page 18, we need to find this little strip here. Matt the G pocket, let's see. Go, I don't think my scraps are in here. Go do this. Scraps everywhere. Oh, it's this big one right here. There we go. The last place I look, of course. All right, so this, what I decided to do, like I said, you'll see it at the bottom of page 18, is I started at the top here. You know, we cut this one off, and we're going to use this where it says mouse and me to um, map the pocket. So three and one quarter by eight. All right, so I guess I'll do the eight. But do you ever do this? You cut right on your your project. I don't do it all the time, but I do sometimes. So take a look and see if you want to trim up a little bit from the M so you don't cut off your E. If you want to be that fiddly, which I'm going to be since I want to say mouse in me. So I'm gonna come over just a little bit cut a tiny strip off the side to get closer to that M and flip it around and then cut it, was it eight? Eight and an eighth? No, it's eight. Eight. Right here. Yeah, to make sure that I got the E. Might not have to have done that, but anyway. Anywho, so now down from here, you need it to be three and a quarter tall. And I think that turns out perfect. You've got these and you've got this little bitty strip at the bottom, which kind of gives it a place to land. So we have that. And now we need some more of that striped paper. We need that to be eight and eight by two and a half. I think I've gotten out everything I needed for today's, but I didn't. <laughs> Let's see if this piece is big enough. Oh no, that's not gonna be eight. This goes this way. I may not have a big enough piece. Oh, this might be exactly eight. Well, this is eight. I said eight and eighth striped paper, but mine is down to eight, so that's what it's gonna be. So eight, two and a half. So flip it over, decide which one of these you want to not use. I don't know which one I, I didn't use. I think I, don't I use this somewhere? I don't know, if I did it, it'd be okay. I'm going to uh, cut on this side. And I need to cut two and a half, right? Two and a half. All right, so this will wind up going inside the pocket here. Like my paper was at eight inches at eight and an eight. So I'm just gonna have a little bit bigger border. And that's okay. And this was also eight. So that's gonna wind up going here. Isn't that cute how that works out with the lettering? All right, then I'm going to ink which side shows. So after this, we're going to I think Matt, the other, yeah, the other two flaps on the back, and then we're going to come back and make what goes in the pocket, which is a little file folder. And I've made the file folder in another, at least one other um, of my projects, and I loved it so much that I brought it back. So we're gonna be making the file folder and putting a couple of photos in there. I don't have to distress the bottom part because it's going inside the pocket. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on first. That'll kind of help me see the pocket a little better once I have it matted. Let me see the outline here. I hope you're enjoying this matting video today. 
I know I'm going into a lot of detail. Sometimes I have it pre-cut, but I've gotten some feedback that you kind of like to cut with me and see the orientation of how I'm cutting sometimes. So I decided to do that with this video. There we go, like that. So I put it in the pocket and then I kind of make it, uh, take a look from right to left and then where the score line is and kind of center that. Okay. I really, really love this theme and I really love this paper. I know this is, I think they have the Echo Park. This might be their third or fourth paper pack. It's this theme, and so all the paper coordinates. It's the same color palette, and it's the same magical theme. And I think as they retire one, they make another one, and I love every one of them. It would be really cool if I had a pack, you know, the first version through like number three or four, and they made a huge album. That would be so much fun. Okay. So we're gonna be at the top of 19. We're going to mat the backs of like B1, B2. So that when you when it's all open like this, the way I close it is I'm gonna assume something's in that pocket and I don't want it to fall out. So I'm going to close the top two flaps down first, then the bottom flap. That's just kinda of how I want it to look. Now I think it makes sense. And then these shorter flaps come on the sides and then the longer flap. So that's how I made it and how I made the score lines work where they won't hit each other. If you try to close it in a different way, you may get frustrated where some of the pages hit each other and that's why, because this is how, this is how I'm closing it and I looked at that as we were putting it together. That's not something you have to know because I you know, did all that math before ahead of time. But just so that you know, if you fold it that way, then things won't hit each other and get stuck. Sorry for that glare from the window. So now we're going to work on these two sides, but I think I'll go ahead and put this out of the way. All right, so we need some cut aparts. These are the vertical ones. This one, I'll grab that. I need some of this red dot paper, and I need this bow, is this bow tie paper not the cutest thing ever? Oh, it's just so cute. I don't know who thought of bow ties of all things. Or maybe it could be hair bows too, but it is adorable to me. Okay, I call it bow tie paper though anyway. <laughs> so it's gonna be six and three quarter wide by five and a half tall. So six and three quarter, don't wanna do that. I wanna do the five and a half. Let's do five and a half. Wait a minute, it's five and a half this way. Yeah, six and three quarter. Five and a half tall. And six and three quarters wide. Double checking my measurements. I'm in the middle of 19. Put that up. So there's that piece. And then we have this cut apart here that I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it apart from the one to the right to just get it and then put this one away. So this one that says tired feet full heart, which like I said, if you've ever been to a theme park, that is a perfect sentiment. This needs to be cut down to five and a half tall. So I'm gonna take some off the top and the bottom. I'm gonna take a, a quarter of an inch off each side. So it still kind of stays centered. So now that's five and a half. Here. What else? Then we have the red dot pattern paper. It needs to be a five and a half tall by two and three quarters wide. Alright. So let me do the five and a half. Okay. And then look at me trying to go to the bottom two and three quarters wide. And then we're gonna have this little piece too. So I'll tell you what mine has left over. It is um, three quarters of an inch. And then on what the directions say here, it says to have a, ha uh, a one inch piece, but it's just for decoration. So I'm not gonna cut another one. I'm gonna use what I had left over here. If that makes sense to you there. So it's just, it's just for decoration, so there's no reason to 
cut something else. All right, so let's do some inking. And we'll do some gluing. The time is flying by today working on this, so I must be really enjoying it. I just looked at the clock and it's been about 45 minutes here. So like I said, I'm gonna push myself on this video because I want to get to the box tomorrow's video. So once we glue this down, what we're going to do is we're going to make the file folder and then that will be it for today but we will have the matting done and the inserts done for this project I guess I can't talk and do this at the same time <laughs> open up our project, put this down, and let's open this up. So the one I did first was the one here on the right that was the back of B1. So what I did is if you wanted, like I said, to use more photos, this will be a good place to do it. Put you another photo here instead of pattern paper, but I like to showcase that pattern paper along with Photos. So what I did is I put this here and I'm gonna put a smaller photo that I can kind of trim down in this area All right, so then I need to corner around the right side Okay, I'm gonna butt these two up against each other kind of see what that's gonna look like and then glue that down okay. Then I have to decide what photo I can put here that I can trim down not only a half an inch off the top and bottom, but also quite a bit from the sides because the photo that goes on here is a, a three by five. It would fit perfect here. So that means taking, oh, that means taking an inch off both sides, right? Because it's a three by five. Off of four by six. Yeah, look at me doing that math in my head. <laughs> so let's take a look. That one I might could trim down. There's a lot of people in there. I could trim this down. This is kind of cute. I really want to do that one. All right, so need to take about a half an inch off each side then if I want to still be in the center. Right. And then, yeah, this might work out perfect. Okay, so I originally had this here. Isn't that so stinking cute. I'm uh, going to go ahead and round those edges. And I used the half an inch side when I was making the base, so that's where I'm gonna continue to, to use that side as I'm trimming up uh, my mats and my photos. I love it, look at a little glare on it. So cute. I know we overuse that word, cute, when we're making projects, but it is. It's adorable. And if we go ahead and bring it over a little bit, just like so. Grab my, it's just a little microfiber cloth that came with a pair of glasses one time that I never used in my purse. So I always use it when I'm putting photos down that are glossy and just kind of push them in place. And it also helps to get my fingerprints off of them if I see it. So I've been doing that for years. And then I just wash it every few projects. All right, so that side's done. Flip this one over. I was like, why is there a photo there already? There we go. Close that down. So I have this here to take up the whole space. All right. So that means on the left side, I need to corner around. Here. And then since I had this left over, it's just a little sliver I probably would not use somewhere else. That's why whatever you've got kind of got left over, that's just going to help bring a little more interest to it. And then when you put your photo down, it's going to kind of help anchor that in place too. So here's some more of those Epcot ones. I loved this. 
these I think I'm going to use in the booklet. I like this one. Do I need to trim it down? It says that the photo is a four by six. So, but there's a lot I could trim off that one. So let me look for another one because I might need that. I might need to get one that can't be trimmed. Like this one is going to look funny if you trim some of it off. And I really want to use this photo because it's my second favorite uh, ride. My two favorites are the Hollywood Tower, the TOT, Tower of Terror, however, what do you want to say it? And um, the other one, you know, we call it Yeti, but it's Expedition Everest. Those are my two very favorite rides. Well, it's so funny, my friend Megan, who loves all rides, the Tower of Terror is one of the very few that she says, I'm only riding this because of you, it's your favorite. For some reason, it gets to her the way Rock and Roller Coaster gets to me. <laughs> it makes me a little sickly. All right, so then if I put it here, like that or so. Um, I've also heard a lot of people talk about that physical rides doesn't bother them, but all these uh, rides that have those screens in it with the animation and um, the 4D type stuff, makes them sicker than any physical ride, which I find interesting because I know there is a ride in Hollywood Studios, Star Tours, that's like that. That you're, you know, you're sitting and it rocks you in your seats, but watching the film that goes with it kind of makes me a, a little bit queasy. But not the phys a physical ride, which is, I don't know, odd. We're all different, I guess. So cute. So cute. So I'm hold this one up a little bit so you can see Grace and I in the front row right here. Me doing my little heart because you know I know where all the cameras are because I'm a geek like that. Okay, so look, we are done matting. We just got to do our little insert for this. So it's uh it's almost an hour, so I might trim down the video just a little bit. See, so look at me not knowing how to do it as I'm doing some of my cutting out, but we're going to get this done. So what you want to do is you want to take the template that came in your physical kit, or if you bought the tutorial only, this is a second PDF. And if you ever have any problems downloading the tutorials, just send me a note through my Etsy shop, through Messenger. I'll be glad to email it to you because it doesn't automatically come by email. It's sitting in your Etsy account and you have to download it and print it. But if you ever have problems with that, just let me know. I'm glad to stick it into an email to you if that's easier. But this is the second PDF that comes. This one is the first. So we're in the middle of page 19. It tells you to cut out your mini file folder. So I'm a good student and I've already done that. So just cut around these uh, dark edges all the way around till you get to this. Okay. And then at the bottom of 19, it tells you which paper we're going to be using, which has got this paper with the dots on it. It might be easier to, to draw on this side is why I have it there, but this is really what's going to be on the outside. So this fit perfectly here. You want to put it in this orientation because it's going to fold like this, and you want to still be able to read the letters. Does that make sense? Like this. So that's why we're going to do it in this orientation. But, like I say, it might be easier to trace on the back because this is a lot lighter. So just make sure your orientation is correct. It's like this. Okay, we're still good. We're still good. Now I'm going to grab some paper clips. And I'm going to butt this up on the side and butt it up on the bottom and clip it into place. So that way we don't have to cut out two of these sides. Just like so. Or you could start uh, with a six and a half by 10 inch piece of paper and then cut it out if you'd like. But I'm gonna do it this way. All right, and then there we go. Put three paper clips on it. So now it's butted up to the bottom and to the right. And just simply trace it out with my pencil. doesn't have to be perfect to just go slow and easy. Around these uh, corners, what I like to do 
is when I come back to cut it out, I normally just use my corner rounder. Like these, you would have to cut out with scissors, but these other three sides, see, you could just use a corner rounder. And I'm gonna come over here to this one, just like that. Easy peasy. So you can follow the instructions here where it says, yours won't have this cut out, but it says from the short side, which this short tab, you can see this is a longer tab, but a, uh, let's see, shorter tab and longer tab. From the short tab, you wanna go up five inches and that's where you're going to make your um, score line. So that's what those instructions mean and we will do that later. What I'm gonna do is try to line this up on the long edge here and cut that just to make my life easier. And do the same thing here. I'm just gonna kind of line it up where this top tab is and cut that off. Or you can just do it all with scissors, but I just prefer to do it that way. And then grab your scissors. I said I'll come back on the corners that can be cut with the corner rounder and do that because then it looks a hundred times better than what I can actually cut. And this one, it's got that funny little shape, like an S shape kind of. Cut that with scissors. This here. This is the one that gets me trying to make this little turn. But it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Now I'll grab my corner rounder. So this one, the, there's a fourth and a half of an inch. So there's one side here that's tiny, so you might want to do that one at the quarter of an inch. But it really doesn't matter. It's just going to give you a smaller rounded edge. If you don't have one like this, see the difference in this one and this one. I don't even know if you can tell. About a half an inch here. All right, so that is done. Easy peasy. And I have had people ask me before if I have SVG files, which are files that you can download and put them on like your Cricut machine or a Silhouette machine. And they'll cut this out for you on your machines. But no, I'm not that sophisticated yet in my designing to make SVGs. But you could just cut out a file folder shape on your Cricut. They have plenty of those in design space. All right, like this. All right, so like I said, on, so you have a, a short tab, long tab. So on the short tab side, we're gonna come up over to five inches and that's where I did my score line. Okay, so. I'll just take a couple seconds here. I'm gonna hit it with my ink. I just think it makes a big difference especially on two-sided projects. Look how pretty that is, it's so cute. I love all those little words. I wonder how long it takes a graphic designer to come up with something like this. How long they work on it and tweak it. For us just to come along right and just cut it in half. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna fold it with the words on the outside. edges on both sides with ink. I'm going to do the same thing on the inside just because I like that look. Get both sides there. Just make sure it's good and inked. Now, this, if you have lots of horizontal pictures, it works well for that. If you've got vertical pictures, you can still decorate it one way, but when you open it, you can put vertical pictures here and on the back or mix and match them. So that's the beauty behind these inserts because you're taking them out of the photo album so you can turn them however you need to. So I'm gonna be doing vertical because I have a lot more of those, but let's go ahead and decorate the front of this. So let's turn over. We're right here on the last little line of 20. 
before we get into the box. So this is where we left off here. So we're going to make a tag. So if you've got my kit, you have some black tags. I'm grabbing those. And this tag is three and an eighth by six and a quarter, if you need to make your own. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, this one says to use a smaller one. See, I might read my own instructions. This is the smaller tag. Apologize, it's two and three eighths by four and three quarters, and we're gonna cut the tag down a little bit. I'm gonna cut it down to four inches tall. All right. So now it's two and three eighths by four. So there's this. Now in the kit, in your ephemera, you have this piece uh, that looks like a tag. You have to like punch out the hole. So I like to take my um, pokey tool and just make sure the holes come out like that. And then all the ones at the bottom. So I poke from the top and push it through to the back. And that way if they don't come all the way out and you're turning it over and you're trying to peel it off. If it does um, rip a little bit, it rips the back. And you don't care about the back, you care about the front. Okay, so that's my little tip on that. <laughs> Hope that helps somebody, right? And the reason we have these tips is because what? We have done this before, that's happened to us. So you see how the edges of this is rounded and this is square? So I'm gonna round my edges. This time on this one, I'm gonna use the quarter of an inch because I want it to be just slightly rounded, like so. And what you wanna do is you want to line it up the two holes, the hole of the ephemera and the hole of your tag lines up like so, isn't that cute? And then we're gonna put the yellow ribbon in there. Quick and easy ephemera and tag piece to put on the front of this to really give it a uh, bang for your buck, I guess, so to speak. And I love black tags. It's not something that I use all the time. I think this is really neat. And so then you can see like through that little lacy edge at the bottom. All right, let's grab, we'd already cut these apart in another video. So you have about 15 to 16 inches of yellow ribbon. So cut it in half. You're using about seven or eight inches on this particular um, tag. So I folded uh, my ribbon in half and then poke that through the front and pull it to the back. Kind of even it up here a little bit. So then through that loop, we can put these little tails and pull it tight. Easier said than done as I'm talking. Come on. This is not difficult. <laughs> okay, there we go, like this. And then from there you can trim up the edges. And I always like to ribbon tail mine by folding the ribbon in half, starting on the outside edge at an angle. See how it's angled toward my finger? And that makes your little ribbon tails like so. You see it, there we go. It's not even, but I still like it. And then I like to rough mine up. Okay, so then this, what I did is, you could put it here on the right or the left, depending on how you laid out your paper. On my original one, let's pull it out here. When I was laying the paper out, so you can see the, this was on this side, this tie did on that side, who knows when I was laying it out why. So on this one, the longer tab is where I put the um, tag. So I'm just gonna do it on this side. I'm just gonna do it on the right side this time to make it longer, but I don't have to, I could put it here. But that's why I was thinking about doing it that way. See, if you flip it over, it is upside down and we don't want to do that with the words. So it's hard to make the same, um, project twice because we all cut the paper differently <laughs> I'm beginning to see that and, and put things down differently the second time around okay we gotta hold this in place a little bit because it's slick till it catches but that was just short and sweet and simple to make and it's so cute 
right, so all that's left to do is add a few photos in here. So like I said, I wanted to put some vertical photos. I have many more of those and anything else. Isn't this cute? Me and my daughter in front of the castle and this on a haunted mansion. Okay, I got to, I could put this one on the back because it doesn't have to be vertical. But let me look through my vertical ones. I love this one. I wish I had one of, let's see. I have lots of Grace. She was so cute. She was kind of celebrating. That was her birthday month. Oh, look, is that like the same picture? Yep, sure is. Show is. Oh, this is us at Epcot. Let's do one of those. That's the that's the back of our backpacks. Here's the front. Since I already did the backpacks, let's do that one. So cute. We bought these really fun headbands while we were there. So much fun. Oh, my IMAX wanting to go to sleep. It's saying, cut this video off, lady. Thank you for hanging in there with me today. And on this, you could corner around the edges of your photos to match up, but there's so much room between them and this one that I just decided it did not need it. So after this, the, uh, the I keep mini album, but it's a wallet style mini album will be complete. And then tomorrow when you come back, we will work on the box. I'm gonna open it like this so that this doesn't get in my way as I'm gluing. We're gonna work on the box. We're gonna put the box together, which is simple, simple. But if you've never put one together before, it does help to have a little bit of help the first time. So you've got written instructions how to do that, but I'm gonna do it with you. And then we're gonna do some matting. So if you've enjoyed this project and you've enjoyed this video, please give the video a like and consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber and come back tomorrow as we finish up our week of working on this magical style uh, wallet album and box and then we'll continue on the next week wherever we left off and then I said we'll go straight into the next project it's the same project just matting it differently with that um, scenic route theme so this goes in here, and like I said, see there's a little bit more room here to put more photos. You could make another one of these with some different paper that you have lying around, or just make black photo mats or color photo mats and put more in this pocket. Just do a test run, make sure you've got enough room to close everything down. But see, now mine is full. I have all my photos I'm gonna put in here, so you will actually see that you have enough room. And this goes here, and this goes here, and this goes here. So mine is full and done. And see how we have plenty of room if I squeeze it down with a little bit of pressure. There's still a little bit of room left in there to put even more photos in. So I will see you back here tomorrow, guys. And thank you again for your support on these kits. As of the filming of this video, I do have a few left. So if you're interested, the magical themed ones go in faster than the uh, scenic route one so if you wanted this one for sure go ahead and jump on that and i will see you back here tomorrow we'll work on the box thanks guys bye